Which one is peanut butter? I would say that Mars is the peanut butter because he's a little bit thicker. <laughs> and the, uh, <laughs> the the phoenix is your jelly because it's a little bit more freeform. I see. Yeah, I knew the answer to that question right away. Yeah, you, you probably saw the question coming. I saw it. Right. You know, I actually have a piece of paper here on my desk that says Neff will ask about which one is the peanut butter and which one is the jelly. This is scripted, you guys. It's actually yeah. a rerun as well. <laughs> They pick up the Viper for Leo style. I hate seeing Leo style on this hero, but I understand why they pick it up. It's just too good to pass up over, especially when you're dealing with the Spectre. Um, you know, you want to be able to drop that Nether Toxin fight in the middle of everything. But the one problem I have right now is they have no way of really locking people down. You know, at most you've got maybe the shards, you've got the, uh, you know, the Sprout coming out from Nature's Prophet to hold them in place. But right now they can all just walk away. They don't care. Nether Toxin's on the ground. All right, peace out. See you later. Yeah, uh, with no way to lock them down. I'm not sure what one here they can get to fix that problem that they have either. Okay, they get rid of the brood mother right now. That one makes sense. You know that you don't want to run that against the viper. You know that four zoomers they have no respect or love for the game. Uh, <laughs> they hmm? they have no respect or love for the game. Whoa, dude, those uh, those some fighting words. I mean, that's just what brood mother pickers are. I calls them like I see them, Moxie. I don't no, think that was ever an issue because I think they picked up the Mars for monkeys. I don't think. Oh, you know, they... Unless they make Gunner play the Mars mid, which is a possibility. Gunner plays quite a few heroes mid, but. They'll sometimes even just run the Broodmother in uh, the safe or the off lane if they have to. Yeah, but uh, it's a monkeys. Like, monkeys is their brood player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But I'm, I'm sure that everybody's practiced enough. If the Broodmother game is good, it's good. And then you just, you know, run the Broodmother. And that's why they've got no respect for the game, you know. Don't want to face their opponents like uh I'm gonna say like like brave souls instead, you know, they fall back on hiding behind an army of a bunch of little spider babies. Pango's banned out last against them. I like that one. You know, he, you don't deal with Pangolier so well, the disarm would do tons of work. Terrorblade is uh, completely wrecked by Lucky Shot. Hmm. Um so that might have been what they were thinking of as far as rounding out their draft goes. And they did need a mid here. They play a lot of that one on their team. I'm not sure what they grab uh, instead of the Pangolier. You know, you do... Hmm. I you think you grab want... a Spirit Hero? For Zoomers? Yeah. Yeah, I think you can grab something like a, a Void Spirit. Or I would like to see the Ember Spirit, possibly. That wouldn't be... I mean, it's still going to struggle against Viper. Viper's just a sign that he's going to win his lane no matter what, for the most part. But uh, Gunner's Ember is fantastic and would pair very, very well with the arena um, and also deal with a lot of these heroes because where's your lockdown? Like I said, Neff. Yeah, exactly. They have uh, 20 seconds to decide how they're going to solve that problem best. Uh, Puck uh, does a decent job, but, you know, you have a huge cooldown on Dream Coil. Uh, you can't really grab an off. I mean, you could grab Axe or something. And they decide to get a Lena. So you have a very low cooldown. Light Striker away, right? but uh, that's something that needs a setup, you know? It's hard to just land those by yourself, especially as the game goes on. Uh, just by yourself, your your stuns in this game are Rollers Punch, Snowball, and Light Striker, right? That feels super, super bad. Uh, Zoomers, they're going to have a... Boys. It's too good to grab a Spirit Hero here. You know, if you don't have those lockdown abilities, uh, you're going to run away at the game no matter what you pick. I think Storm struggles a lot against both the Viper and the Lena. It's almost definitely going to be the Viper in the mid lane. So, as you said, it's got to be an Ember Spirit. Show me the Ember Spirit. Huh? Whoa! Green Ember. That's interesting. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that one before. It's like you were saying before, these hats in uh, 2020, you know, uh, no glance really value. Really glance value, yeah, yeah. You know, next thing you know, Pugma's gonna be on a bicycle. <laughs> We're not gonna even know. He's not even gonna have to walk anywhere. He's just gonna run like a little Jetsons Hoover car, you know. Man. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, I I would say no. Nah, that's too far. They'll never introduce things like that. But you know, Ogre Magi doesn't have a mount normally in his arcana. Yeah, he's that. definitely it's... got some sort of chicken. He's made into an indentured servitude that looks very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> tell Maybe me i'm wrong tell me that i i can't you are not all i'm not going to call you a liar when you're you're preaching over here moxie i'm thinking maybe a trikey for gunners uh part you know though you know a, be, like a big wheels yeah big wheels exactly yeah, i'd buy that skin mm -hmm. he but, moves uh, pretty fast so it would make sense if he was uh on some sort of mount 
It does, but uh, this, okay, I do like this. They did swap around, so Leo Style's going to be playing the Lena, and Frank's going to be on the Viper. MJZ will be playing the Nature's Prophet. So they shift things around a little bit. I feel like Leo Style can perform very well on this Lena, but I also feel like now that he's facing off with Gunner, things are going to be a lot more difficult for him. Yeah, uh, exactly. Um you thought they were going to have a favorable matchup. I am sure they thought they were going to run a spirit here in the mid lane as well, and maybe they could win the game off of the back of mid going super well. But e even so, I don't feel like Viper is a hero that carries the game by itself. Uh, and now you're up against Pugna. Uh, the game just becomes too easy. I'm so glad we're seeing more Pugna, by the way. I thought that this hero was incredibly undervalued. And you know, now that we've been sitting on this path for so long, people are starting to really push things to its limits and try different stuff. Uh, my the only sad part is I thought maybe Pugna would get another buff in the next patch and then just be super powerful, but I don't think we're gonna see that at this point if he's still getting picked up a lot now. Aw, a little bit of wholesome chat between the two teams here. You love to Aww, see it. You love you, to see the love. You do. Now he's actually a really nice dude. Mm -hmm. I remember I, I was casting one game or something, and he had a really rough game um, for their first one. And he was kind of like sad about it in the the lobby, and everyone, even the enemy team, was just like, "Oh, you did, you did all right, buddy. It's okay. The next one's gonna be better." Like, I loved it. I was like, "Oh, look at them. They all care about Matthew." <laughs> and Matthew took some time off too, if I recall as well. Like he uh, took a step away from Dota for a little bit, but I'm glad he's back. I really love watching his position four play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, some some people, you know, uh, they leave the game for a little while, then they come back uh, eventually. I took a year break uh, for a bit and barely played it all, if any. Uh, didn't do anything Dota related, but it's hard when you're a pro player to get back in there. I mean, you lose so much when you're away for any period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the use it or lose it sort of skill. Rolling on in, putting some pressure on MNZ. And Jay Z nearby is just gonna try to get a couple of these little value clicks off, but MNZ taking a lot of damage here as Ocean and Monkey's just running at them. Did opt to go for that shield. Bash will turn back around, put some more damage over here onto MJZ. Body blocks coming out from Ocean. MNZ trying to help him at all, but there's the roll forward again here. Looks like they're gonna respect the tower though. They don't want to dive it at this time, but both of them sitting so very low. There is no regen really left over on MJZ. He opted to go for the two fairy fires. And Terrorblade's going to be chewing through those tangos. Yeah, and, you know, already going through so much of your regen, it becomes very difficult. I always say that I'm super upset whenever I see uh, an enemy support. Uh, actually, anybody come to lane with, like, a lack of regen. It feels like they disrespect me. I just go like a mad dog at them and click them repeatedly. But that is actually the solution to it. You know, if they come to lane without regen, you just punish them for it. That's exactly what Ocean's doing here. You're going to be forced to spend your gold on some extra regen, and you don't get that uh, use out of, uh, I guess, getting the items you can sell or scale into things later as the game goes on. You no, know? have and you ever seen some? I thought Monkeys was going to go for this kill here over an MNZ. He's like really hot on his butt the entire time. It's like he'll respect the fact that he's underneath the tower, though. Not quite enough damage here. Only level one. If he had a spear, perhaps, but. Monkeys respects nobody. He is a vegetarian, after all. I don't know where I was going with that. The guys always make fun of him for it. <laughs> He's actually one of the most PMA like positive people, like him and Brax. They're gonna they're gonna make NA a non toxic place again. I'm sure of it. Mm, we'll see. There's a lot of steps we need to go through in order to get there. Baby steps, man. Baby steps. Gotta highlight the good ones, right? The good eggs. Yeah. Oh, the courier. Ocean's courier goes down. And MJZ just teleports right on out. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit of a bait there, in fact, of him uh, trying to get Earth Spirit to roll back onto him. He thinks, okay, if you cancel that guy's TP, he's out of commission for a very long time. Uh, but it's in nature's profit, so him being level 2, he can just teleport back in the line. That's why he chose to use the town portal school there. Bait that guy out. It was a massive brain play by MJZ, but you know, uh, equally high IQ player Ocean doesn't fall for it. No, he doesn't. How's this mid lane going? I feel like we've been staring a lot at the bottom lane, but 
Not so much here in the mid. Leo style having a nice lead here. 15 and 5 to Gunners, 10 and 2. And top lane, though, we do get our first blood as Husky manages to take down Frank. Good rotation coming out from Ocean there. A uh, clean kill, and that'll allow uh, Husky to get boots to speed. Not super useful on the Phoenix because you're not that great at rotating and uh, securing runes uh, or ganking the enemy mid, but still. It's a nice start for four zoomers. Mid lane is, uh, like you said, going the way of Leo style at for, for now. But in oh. comes Ocean. Decrepify comes out. He's going to slow him down with one of those hits there. Need a little bit more damage, and they just don't seem to quite be able to catch him in time. Ocean just a little bit off on that roll, and they took a lot of damage from the tower and Leo style. Cancel out the salve over onto Gunner. Yeah. But uh, this is uh, just what I was uh, touching on. Just uh, the fact that you have so much more base damage in the Pugda and more attack range means you can have the advantage early on. Way easier for you to see us, uh, especially when you have a Fiery Soul as well. But, you know, as uh, the lane goes on, Pugna, he gets further ahead. He has, uh, I think, the highest uh, main attribute growth in the game at 5.2. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, so he's getting more than 5 damage a level. Frank getting the kill on Sammy Boy in the top lane. We're putting the pressure down, but we do have four minute runes coming up, and it looks like they'll be able to secure the double damage rune for Leo in the top spot. So, Gunner does have a full bottle, doesn't really matter too, too much, but he's got to be a little bit afraid of Leo style because he is starting to take a bit of a lead here. Mm -hmm. Saving like Grace. Level lead. Yeah, your saving grace is that you have uh, 330 movement speed. Oh. They're going in for the swoop over onto Leo Star. Matthew is here. He's going to try to keep him alive. Does have the shards. Be able to throw a couple more of these spirits. They need just a little bit more damage. And I don't think they're going to be able to finish off Leo Star as they turn right back around again. They kill on Husky. MJZ and Matthew. The Wambulance is coming in to try to save the roll forward, though, coming out from Ocean. But where's the rest of the damage? They don't have it. Ocean's going to die for this. He just went too far. They still do not manage to get the kill on Leo Star. Gunner held up into the trees. Light Strike Array will connect. And down he goes, Leo style, styling over in the mid lane. I uh, I don't know how to sum up how insanely good everything Leo style just did there was, and that is the only reason he survived. He used the bottle on himself in between the fire spirits ticks perfectly, uh, which left him I think at twenty HP after it, and had the the raindrop sent out to him at the same time there. That, uh, along with the fact that he didn't go through his entire bottle in a panic, meant he got to use it a second time, which allowed him to live through that other nether blast over here. He did so many such clutch things there. And you have to keep in mind that this guy is doing this on 150, almost 200 ping. That was absolutely insane. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't seen that kind of precision as far as, like, bottling up and your items coming in in ages. I mean, there's a reason I say he's the oh best God. mid player SA, and I think with that play, you know, it really highlights why, uh, one of the reasons anyways, why I think that. I am fangirling over this man right I now. I can tell. You're all giggly. <laughs> Look at you. You ooh-ooh-ing over there. I hope Leo Style notices me after the cast. <laughs> <laughs> he's a cool kid, that, uh, that Leo Style. I want everyone who is watching this game to like pull this open in uh, Dota TV and watch exactly what he did there. It was so sick. You know, one little mistake there and nothing would have gone quite as good as it did. But uh, that's Dota. It's a beautiful game, complicated and, uh, you know, butterfly effect and whatnot. I mean, that's one of the things that I love about this game is it is so complicated and you can do quite a few really amazing, just not even just, you know, theorizing, but the technical. Plays that you can make are really incredible. Oh, MJZ. Oh, they get the denial off on the ward. All right. Always feels really bad when you place down a ward and uh, it immediately gets taken down. Yeah, especially when it's Observer, the enemy gets a bunch of XP and gold. It's mm -hmm. like not a joke either. 100 XP goes a long way in the early game. Hey, Strune over here, Leo style sidestepping. They've got the life drain. Can they finish them off fast enough? It's looking like they will. Down goes Leo style with a little help from. The friends over here on four zoomers. Mm -hmm. Man, Sammy Boy's having a terrible time here in this top lane, though. It is so hard for him to get anything done. Matthew's rotated up as well. And he's only sitting at level five. TPs are coming out, though. Ocean wants to try to punish them for this. They'll be able to go land that roll over onto Matthew. Sammy says, I just, I really don't want to engage on this. I don't feel comfortable. Let me just hit the creeps and you protect me. Yeah. Uh, that was the price they pay, though, for rotating those three heroes mid onto Thunder Predator. And, uh, you know, gets back now on Gunner. 
Yeah, Matthew's just a little bit off on those shards in the mid lane, so it's like Gunner's able to just walk away, and they force out the TP, so hmm. probably pretty satisfied with this. Would like to mow down this mid tower, right? It is a Pugna. It is sitting fairly low. Uh, they have vision on Matthew here. I'm surprised that Gunner's just running right at him, but it is the eight-minute rune, so perhaps he just wants to see where it's going to spawn. It looks like it's spawned in bottom, though, and Lena snaps it up. It's a regen rune, so Lena's now very happy with this. Yep. You know, uh, this is uh, what I was just touching on earlier. It's very difficult to shove in the mid lane. The only way you do it is if you go on the lane. It is a hero that's susceptible to getting run at by the Earth Spirit. But, you know, you're so far ahead at this point, you're forced to run in both the Phoenix and the Earth Spirit and the Pugnum with the Haste. And because you did that, you know, you were forced so far back on the Sammy Boy and it left uh, your top tower open. And, you know, MJZ, he has a much easier time uh, pushing these towers in Pugna because you can just teleport on top of them and drop his treants on them, which, of course, we're probably going to see him do again. Ocean standing nearby, and you've got the Tusk here, too. Blade Mail completed over here on Sammy Boy. The roll forward over onto Frank as he kicks them a little bit further away, but they get the tree up all but the snowball. This is looking like a dead ocean here, so... A valiant effort, but this tower is going down. Sammy's canceling out the salve over onto Frank, though, at the very least, but he'll back off. And down goes the tower. Yep. Gunner doing what he can to take advantage of the fact that so many heroes on Thunder Predator uh, had teleported top, but you know, it, it's hard to push into Leo's. You have so much attack bait, uh, attack range, you shove out the lane with Dragon Slave. He might commit for it really hard here, given the fact that it's only sitting in 244, like two more Nether Blasts, and he has it. Yeah, they fought up the creeps. This Phoenix on the other side here with Monkey. So they're looking to just get the kill on Leos down. They'll go. They'll use the arena. Spear her over to the wall with the Decrepify. Shield bash coming in. And a big old Nether Blast will take down Lena. And they'll take down the tower. Matthew burning up a little bit to a crisp. Tusk doesn't like that. Will turn himself into that snowball as he rolls back onto the creep wave. Ocean. Oh, Ocean just a little bit off on that roll. Trying to roll right back into him. But Gunner gets himself a double kill. Not the rest of the team, uh, you know, I don't think that they were there in time to really realize the situation. Uh, that is the price that you pay for sitting the Lena in front of the tower here. Though. That's why so many people like, uh, you know, dropping heroes like Tidehunter, Mars, Underlord in front of the tower. They're able to take a little bit more punishment. Even though you have the wave clear on Lena, you are susceptible to just getting dove under the tower and they can blow you up very quickly. Uh, Going to have to be a bit careful with their positioning uh, going forward this game. And that's why, you know, the first item they've queued up is uh, Yule Semper. Well, that and the fact that it's just... You know, like a core item on Lena. Sets up those light strike arrays for you. And this is something we were talking about, too. You do need that setup. You have a serious lack of disable on Thunder Predator. Um, it's a very big problem. Zoomers, though, to be fair, don't also, you know, they they don't have a lot of lockdown. They were literally relying on the fact that they have the Mars Arena and that Ocean lands all of those rolls and kicks and whatnot. Uh, because the egg is, of course, you know, a bit risky. You never know if you're actually going to be able to get it off. So, that's what it is. Husky standing nearby doesn't quite have that level 6 just yet. So the tower will go down in the mid lane. Not too much that they can do about it, but they also managed to take the tier 1 bottom. And MNZ forced out of the jungle by Sammy. Doesn't want to have to deal with him just yet. Level 8 on Spectre and uh, MNZ sitting at 9. Ocean uh, rotating down here wants to find somebody alongside uh, Gunner. I mean, it's the only person he gets to play around right now. Spectre is going to haunt him if anything happens. Uh, they're not really going to gank him. You know, even if they initiate on the Spectre, I don't think you do anything with the Earth Spirit. So move around with your uh, your Pugnet and try to set up kills right now. It does feel a little bit difficult given you know uh, how much better I think they are taking fights on Thunder Predator right now. I mean, Matthew's more than happy to run at you guys, and uh, wherever MJZ is, he's also going to be able to jump in. Doesn't have that huge cooldown to worry about like Sammy Boy does on his haunt. He's got Blade Mill as well. Uh, you know, every Spectre seems to be going this item just because it increases their farming speed so much. It's new hotness. Yep. Everybody's getting it. I like it more than Midas. I like it more than Midas, too. I feel like anything that allows you to fight early and also gives you that little bit of an edge for farming is super value. Mm. Are you Ooh. also part of the anti-Midas Midas club? Uh, I don't know if I'm anti-Midas Midas, but mm. 
I, uh, you know, I can appreciate a good Mask of Madness when it comes out. Husky gonna get blown up with that Laguna Blade, but the Han comes out. They know they don't have to worry about an Ocean. Just a little bit off on these rolls again, but they follow up with the Arena. Down goes Leo Sal. Matthew's gonna get pinned to the side. And they lose their Phoenix, but they're able to take out the mid laner and the position four. So I think Zoomer's happy about that. But MNZ having the time of his life here in the top lane, although with Gunner making his way over. Of course, there is no way to really lock him down. Get a bit of a drain. Ocean has to be careful because they do have the Sunder up and available on the Terror Blade. Roll in again, coming out from Ocean. He's gonna just try to chase down over here after MJZ, and they slowly but surely suck him dry. Yeah, nothing you can do to get out of that one. Uh, tried to play Edgar a little bit and get them off uh, MNZ, but he ended up paying for it with his life. Earth Spirit, uh, he got to go, what? Uh, 2-2-1, two, two, uh, because you're playing against the Terra Blade. You know, you, uh, having Rolling Boulder maxed out as quickly as possible to close gaps is super important. But he also gave him this one point in Geomatic Grip. So the two-second window of uh, silence is going to prevent MNZ from getting off that Sunder when he's uh, very close to death. And that was the logic behind that one. Unfortunately, he hasn't really gotten to get on top of the guy. You know, Terra Blade sitting at the ideal Terra Blade score of 0-0-0. Zero, zero, and zero having a good time doing what he does best, which is hitting creeps. He just has to hope that he's able to get Sunders off in a lot of these fights, though, too, because that's going to be very spooky otherwise. Can't tell you how many times I've seen a good Earth Spirit player just consistently stun lock with any sort of silence added onto it, and uh, just make it so that way there's no Sunder available. But I mean, MJZ, you know, he's paused five, uh, but he wants to find a little bit of farm for himself. I mean, that is the perks of having a nature's profit, right? It's the fact that you can do a little bit of split pushing. You can still be there for any sort of gank because it's a global ability. And, uh, you know, as long as you know where people are on the map, you're feeling pretty good. Mm -hmm. It looks like they want to invade the enemy triangle here. It's very difficult to take this hill, though. Matthew is uh, standing guard here as well. Try to go for a smoke play on this. We'll throw out some shards here. Monkeys. Caught off from everyone else, and there's going to be the Walrus Punch coming out, but he manages to go, and he gets the arena up. Sunray coming through, plus the egg over onto the side. they got to turn back around. They've got to take care of this egg, and it's not looking like they're going to be able to, but no, Monkeys goes down. And, uh, oh, at the last second, Husky managing to just pop that egg, but now Ocean getting the Viper Strike to the face, and the Light Strike array. He's going to go down. MJZ falls on the back lines, but... You've only taken out their supports here. I'm not sure if that was worth it. And they're still chasing them. They want Husky. They don't have the Icarus dive on him to crap a five eyes a little bit more time. Laguna comes out from Leo style, though. See you later. Yeah, they wanted a little bit more than that. You know, Lena realizing you can just continue chasing, but they're not going to be able to grab Gun. And this guy's 400 movement speed, so he's going to get away from that. But that's the price you pay there. You know, invading the triangle when, uh, you know, tier one is still up on the top, uh, tier two is uh, from the bottom, the enemies aren't otherwise preoccupied, is extremely hard. Uh, there's a reason why a lot of people call this the castle. I see a lot of. Ooh. He's dead. Yeah. Wait, they call what the castle? Uh, this up here, the the triple camp. Oh. I think PPD calls it castle. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, PPD. I will be stealing that for my cast from now on. Hmm. <laughs> of course, uh, the thing about castles is uh, your enemies can take them, so it becomes very hard for you to fight into the enemies on top of that hill as well. True. Sure. Have to defend your castles, guys. And your ancient. And your Ancients is literally the name of the game. Defense of the Ancient. Two. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> the row forward over here onto Matthew. They'll kick him right back over into the corner. Monkey's here. Pins him to the tree plus a sun ray. And down goes Tusk. Well, the kill on Matthew isn't that big of a deal. But, you know, uh, just continuing to invade the enemy jungle. Uh, playing very aggressive right now. Using uh, this... Red Spirit's like very low cooldown stun to their advantage. Ooh. MNZ gets spotted out here. They'll go and they'll use the arena and they have to make sure that they can lock him down though fast enough. Otherwise, oh, plus the haunt coming out. Yeah, I'm sorry there, MNZ. There is not going to be a Sunder for you. Not here, not now. Nothing they could do there, unfortunately. You know, at the end of that uh, stun, the, the Red Spirit does throw out the Geomatic Rep just for good measure. 
This is, uh, you have to be a little bit careful when you're using a mantis style just to farm and whatnot, though. So you do end up getting punished for things like that. You want to be able to hold it, and you definitely need more HP right now. Um, I, I think, you know, after you get the BKB, after you get a Scotty, uh, you might be better off. But by then, you know, I think Sammy Boy is just uh, going to be too far ahead. Yes, you are at the top of the net worth right now, but overall, you know, for Zoomers, they just have so many more tools in their team fights. They're pretty neck and neck right now, both teams under 1k advantage lead, but, uh, you know, you do have a lot of these cores over on the side of four zoomers, also just keeping pace here. Ooh, Essence Ring, good pick up here. Um, but that became the issue when one of our previous games, right? We saw that Hector, he had a lot of farm, but the rest of his team had fallen too far behind, so he wasn't able to carry it alone. Uh, especially with the way how farmed everyone else is. Oh, Leo style, you walked into the wrong part of town, my friend. Bye bye. But Frank, Ooh. on the meanwhile, manages to find the kill on Sammy Boy. That's actually very surprising here. Decrap five gets used on Frank. He's already out. MJZ and Matthew are still here. They have a glimmer cape available over on the Nature's Prophet. Gunner searching for Matthew. Doesn't have enough damage or any way to really just hold him into place. I'm surprised that we haven't seen an Atos come out here. On uh, for Zoomers for the Pugna? Yeah, I'm yeah. surprised that we haven't seen anything that will hold him into place. Yeah, I, th I think he just wants uh, the extra range. Is why he got the Aetherian. It's a very common first item. And the mm -hmm. four Staff actually does a lot of work this game. Being able to get away, uh, you know, out of the Sprout, uh, away from um, the Nether Terrible. Toxin. Nether Toxin, too. yeah, exactly. And when you throw down the Arena, uh, you know, the enemies can slow you down a little bit with a lot of the skills on Viper. But if you four Staff them through the Arena, you're safe from a lot of what they have because it's. Uh, four ranged heroes on their side. Once you get through the arena, the projectiles don't come in or out. So right. it can do a lot of work this game. I like the fact that he picked up the four staff. But as you said, uh, Atos would be pretty nice as well, given you know your, your little bit of lack of lockdown that you have. Man, did you see that game? I think it was uh, mid one was playing. Was he playing Faceless Void? And he jumped in after the Mars ultimate to do the chrono screen. He got a good chrono off, but there was a creep blocking him from being able to get into the the arena slash chronosphere. Oh my god. It was yeah, oh my god. My my heart broke for him. I was like, oh no. I couldn't believe it happened. Scrapify being used over here onto Matthew. Ocean rolling on forward. Silence is gonna go connect. They have a shield bash, and it's taken a little while to take down Matthew. And they don't want to fight underneath that nether toxin, but they don't have to. Because you know what, Gunner? He has that nether blast, and they'll take down the position for yet again. Seems too quick. Ooh, yeah, there's a little bit of a scuffle over here. They've got their eyes on Melina. And unfortunately, Leo style. You're not going to survive this. But that's buyout, though, gets his BKB. So next time, maybe he'll be able to survive a little bit longer. And maybe walk away. Uh, Lena's having a lot of the problems that a Drow Ranger normally has. You know, these enemies just able to jump onto him and no saves uh, on this, your team to be able to punish them, you know? At the start... The jump forward onto Frank with the Decrepify, the life drain. They don't even need to bash him over there into the walls. So they do have to be careful. They're taking a bath in all this nether toxin. Snowball comes out, connects over here onto Sammy Boy. MNC's here, though. Sammy Boy, he's got the blade mail. They'll turn right back around again with the life drain. In comes the Nature's Prophet. They don't have enough to really burst him down fast enough. And some of these heroes have way too much health. This Terror Blade can easily turn back around and get the Sunder off. So, poor Zoomer's having to play a little bit careful right now. Especially easy, given that Black King bar he has. But, you know, uh, I think they, they know they can't go back in right now on four Zoomers. They didn't commit everything they have, though. You know, they still have Supernova and Haunt available. If they if uh, Thunder Predator decided to chase them forward, then I think they could have been punished for that. So right now, I think they just wait for Metamorphosis. Oh, he canceled the smoke. That's uh, unfortunate. I don't think that they see him enter this one, though. I don't think know. so. It feels a little strange that that would be the next thing that they go for, but you do have the Earth Spirit standing outside. He thinks something's really up, bad. Ocean. No, he rolls up over onto the high ground. This rush is going down so fast, they're not going to be able to contest it. They have no idea. It's done. It's gone. MNZ grabs himself up the Aegis. He's got multiple ways now of staying alive in the next fight. That was just four zoomers not reading that one. They had Haunt available. Metamorphosis had just expired as they finished off the Roshan and Supernova. They could have used that outside the pit. They had so many tools for taking an amazing Roshan right there, but they snuck that one. Excellent play there by Thunder Predator. And I feel like that was not much needed. You know, four zoomers are constantly taking the aggression of them right now. And Leo style, he's having a bit of a rough go at it, having died like, God, I think four or five times in a row now. You know, he had an excellent start to this game, but 
uh, he keeps getting uh, gone on by the enemy heroes, and they don't really have space to protect him. It's got to be MNZ who safe, uh, farms the safe areas of the map. It's just so dangerous for Leo Stout because he has no method of being able to really escape other than, you know, he does have the BKB now, but you don't want to use that defensively. And then, of course, you've got the Yule Scepter, but he's been using it aggressively to be able to try to, you know, set up kills. And even then, even if he kept it defensively, uh, he still doesn't survive this with the way that four Zemers are playing so tightly knit together. Style. He's going for... Uh, uh, sorry, wrong hero selected. I, I don't think the four staff is going to be able to save him the majority of what they have at this point, though. I think Leo Style is... You know, his game feels... Immediately as they go into the high ground, Leo Style's here to the tree. Haunt's going to come out. They want to just blow him up. They'll follow up with a really nice arena. BKB comes out, and they do manage to go. They're burning them down over here on the side. Frank's going to go down. They're trying to keep Sammy Boy alive. Can they do it for long enough? He's still left. No, at the last second, he is going to pop. Egg's going to go down over on the other side. MJZ gets decrepified. They take down the egg, though, as Gunner just draining away over here onto MJZ. But he needs to run. This Terror Blade does so much damage. He's got the Glimmer Cape. He's tuned. Oh, he cancels it out. He's thinking about going right back in. He tries to go and help him, but... Looks like Ocean gonna be taken down here as Gunner has no exit strategy now. Has the Glimmer Cape up in about a second. Is gonna try to stay alive. Leo Style looking for this. Will turn around MNC's back up. That was, of course, the Aegis. As they take turns and they just take out Leo Style. Spear doesn't connect here from Monkeys. It's Decrepify, though. Buys him a little bit more time. Monkeys trying to be the bodyguard. He's gonna protect his Whitney Houston here as he teleports out. They have no way of canceling Ooh. it. At the last second, he gets a kill on Gunner, and that's a 10 times kill streak ended. Oh, just managed to get that one there. My God, that team fight was so much better for them, thanks to the fact that Lena could not be taken out at the start there. That was such a quick blink into a snowball save there by Matthew. God gamer, honestly. Lena, she kind of messed up at the, the end there, you know, throwing out that light streak right onto the Pogda made him die, just for the fact he missed it, had it on cooldown right there. But... You know, they really needed that team fight on uh, Thunder Predator. Yes, you did end up falling once on Terrible at the start of it, but I feel like overall you're pretty happy with that one. I would say so. It's interesting. It was a four for fi uh, five fight overall, but uh, it was actually uh, 2,600 XP going the way of Thunder Predator despite losing five uh, heroes to Thunder or four Zoomers four and oh, about 800 gold. That swing, oh my goodness. <laughs> you love to see it. I'm glad uh, Leo Style has like a, a bit more entrance back in the game at this point. Matthew set him up for success there with that snowball. Because they know what they need to do on four zoom is they can take Leo Style out of these fights. You know, even though we've got the BKB, if you can chain stun him up and get on top of him with the Spectre, you can blow him up. And if he's not contributing, you just win the fight. They're gonna lose this bottom tier too if they're not careful. Although it looks like some of the heroes are backing off over on the side of Thunder Predator. Leo Style just sieging away. They're trying to just take over this triangle here. But there's nobody home. Everybody is either in the bottom part of the jungle or they're just hitting this tower. And they get a tier two. Easy. Sure. MNZ, he continues to go forward, but I don't think he's gonna send anything other than his illusion to the high ground here. I mean, he's MNZ. Oh, you're right. He is MNZ. <laughs> he's MNZ. <laughs> this man. <laughs> If he thinks he can possibly get away with it, he's going to try. And uh, yeah, the rest of the team is here, though. They're just going to drop right back down again. Mars getting thrown up Ooh. into the air using that Yule's the light striker right connects, though. And it looks like Monkeys isn't going to be able to start as he does. MNT, he pops the BKB. Leo style as well. How they use the haunt. They managed to take down MJZ. They want to try to get the jump over here onto the Terrible, but they can't quite grab him fast enough as the rest of the team now just teleports out. Ooh, we, uh, that was a close one. Did you see how hard MNZ baited them out at the start? Uh, the spear ended up hitting the illusion back into the tower there. And, uh, you know, he was so convinced there on Ocean that it was the real hero that he rolled right through it and put himself out of position for that fight. It looked like Thunder Predator was going to be able to take it, but, you know, uh, I don't think they were expecting the enemies to get baited out like that one, so they weren't far enough up. But overall, uh, I feel like that was pretty good. They committed the haunt uh, right there. Uh, and they did like 50% damage to that tier 3 tower. It's not bad at all. Love, your MNZ is not going to actually go. I'm like, yeah, no. We have, my sweet summer child, we have much to teach you about MNZ. Minos, the way he plays his heroes. <laughs> but the MJZ does get taken down. The meta is down now, too. So they could try to siege and put some more damage down. But it's like Sammy. He's going to back off. We'll use the fortification again. They've taken over this triangle. 
but uh, about the same cooldown on the... Ooh, the jump forward, the blink from Matthew. They wall wrist punch right over there onto Gunner. He is absolutely dead. Buyback now coming out from MJZ. Ocean gonna get held up into these trees, but the Yules comes out again, gets that magnet off, and doesn't matter, though, because he's just dead. <laughs> Matthew, amazing initiation there by him, you know. Catching out all the enemies, getting the saves on Lena. Matthew, uh, you know, even though he's two and six, he, he's doing huge work this game with just one item. Blink Dagger is all this Matthew. man needs. I mean, how many times have we seen tusks that just, I think Schofield was doing it too, right? Schofield had himself a Blink Dagger. He would get in these impossible situations where it looks like, oh yeah, he's definitely dying. But at the last second, you know, gets the snowball off, immediately blinks away. And he's back in it. I, I'm not sure they're going to be able to push high ground now. Haunt is uh, pretty close to getting back up. You know, he's just about to have Pugna again. You know, MNZ, you're right. I don't know him well enough at this point. But uh, fighting into this is like the Phoenix Supernova in the Mars Arena uh, on top of the enemy base when you know that they're all waiting there. That's a little bit too wild for him. I mean, MNZ is one of those guys. Oh, go back. Get yourself your item. Okay. Sorry. I always panic when they do that, when they walk away and the item drops from an illusion. Um, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen many, uh, many items get left behind and discovered by the enemy team. But yeah, MNC is one of the, he's an excellent player, but at the same time, he takes these very risky plays. And uh, my good friend, Mr. Avo Plus and I, when we're watching Thunder Predator games, we have these moments of like, oh my God, I can't believe he's going to do that. We both stress out. Okay, there's an item drop there. Please go back for it. Thank you. Um, we both stress out because we know MNZ, either this is going to be like the play, the perfect situation where he's going to just, you know, know his limits so well, or he just throws the game completely. I'm not even kidding. Anyone who's a Thunder Predator fan, you know, you love MNZ, you love Minos. Formerly Kotaro, but this man can throw games like nobody's business. <laughs> uh, I'm curious as what the the actual uh, what the fans think of that one. If I'm mad at you for uh, talking bad about their boar, they're like, "Yeah, that's fair. She's right about it's that." It's fair. It's <laughs> me. It's fair. He's a great player, but he makes some questionable decisions. Sammy boy. Oh, they want to make plays. They have the haunt. They've got Basher up and running, but. Yeah, I, I think uh, they want to hold for a little bit on MNZ, you know. Uh, he is pretty close to his butterfly right now. He's sitting on, like, uh, too much unused net worth. He, it's not going to make a massive difference in these team fights. Again, a lot of the damage coming out onto you is the magical or the pure coming up from the desolate on the specter. But, you know, the extra agility from it, the extra attack speed and damage is going to be pretty good. The evasion just, you know, not the biggest deal, unfortunately. And uh, take a look at what uh, Leo Styles is going to queue up next. You know, he is going for um, the Hurricane been... Pike of his own. He's been going, going for that for a while. while. Yeah, it's... He Maybe he's not, changed his uh... mind. I mean, he is sitting on a decent chunk of gold here, but... You don't really love the uh, the Hurricane Pike, right? Uh, I think it's kind of important as they get on him, but I think, you know, regardless, the Hurricane Pike isn't going to save you. The Spectre's going to jump on you regardless. The Earth Spirit's going to gap that distance, and the Hurricane Pike isn't uh, going to make up for any of that. I think you're better off going in another item that either tanks you up or uh, disables the enemies. Spectre the teleporting out of the mid lane here. He's just got Haunt available, so could jump back in if they decide to go for this play. M and Z, though, playing very, very forward, so they have to realize that it's not everything is as it seems. Matthew with that smoke of deceit hanging right by his side. They've got their own smoke, though, coming up from the side of four Zoomers. Matthew, smoke will pop, as will Huskies. A bit of a stalemate here in the middle lane. They're going to go for it again, the absolute mad lads. That's a risky play. I don't think they know. Oh, my God. There is no way, no way. the Thunder Predator no pulls another way. rabbit out of their hat. It's too late. They've got it. It's too late. It's done. Yeah. That's an Aegis for MNZ. Second one here. Snowball gets used over onto Husky. He's got the Icarus dive, though, and four staff will be just fine. And everybody on four Zoomers just backing off. Zoomers, that lack of awareness of, you know, the enemies. You could clearly see that they were off the map. They were trying to set up around the Roche Pit for a little while there. That's twice that you've given up uh, to no contest, and you are able to take these Roche fights, you know? You have the Arena of Blood. You have Supernova. Haunt is also amazing. Um, 
It just very is... surprised that they they weren't like even checking the Roche pit even, you know? Yeah, exactly. Especially you know these timings. I think uh maybe they're just all working on their next item. I mean, you just completed like Vlad's BKP on the Mars. Uh you're going for Shiva's right now on the Phoenix. Yeah, that would make sense to me. And of course, uh, Scotty on CME Boy here. There's a lot of ranged heroes on the enemy team. So once you're on top of them with Spectre and that Scotty, they're not going to get away. They could just be like not interested at all in taking a fight until that item is completed. And there's one possibility. And that's possible. You know, once he has that, I, I think that uh, Four Zoomers is going to be able to take the fights. But they're splitting them up around the map. And you do still have to be pretty afraid uh... of the damage. Ocean, Matthew following up. Sammy Point is here though. And he's gonna go chasing after Matthew, chasing after Leo style. The buyback coming out from Ocean. Matthew's not looking like he's going to survive this, so he's gonna get taken down. The Icarus Five though over here on Leo style. They're on the hunt, they're looking to see if they can grab. They have the clumsy net monkey looking for this opening. They don't quite manage to land that uh, meteor hammer, but they'll still be able to get the kill on Leo style. And over on the other side here, MNZ joining into the fight. They don't have the arena anymore though, they don't have the haunt. So it feels like they might back off. Monkey's stuck in the trees over here. He's just going to go get Decrepify, teleport out. And uh, Gunner, the Aeon Disc procs. They still have the vision on him, though. He's going to fall here, I think. Although, do they have it? Do they have anything to cancel out the CP? No, he's out. He's gone. See you later. Everybody's gone. And that's uh, one of the issues with the MNZ on the Terror Blade. He came into that with Aegis, Metamorphosis, the Scotty, Butterfly, Completed, Paladin Sword. Strongest man you have ever seen. But... The half the enemies are inside the arena, so your attacks aren't going to reach them. Uh, and you try and chase Pugna, but he just clicks the Yules on you, dispels your double damage, decrepifies, and walks away. And of course, with Lena and uh, Tusk down, you don't have anything to cancel TPs. In fact, MNZ, he queues up an Abyssal Blade immediately after that fight. He is angry. He is uh, not a happy man. Very powerful, but not a happy one. Just wait till he gets his hands on them. <laughs> well, he's walking right into them right now. Chasing after monkeys. Monkeys. He has the arenas. Looks like he's going to use his pins. MNZ right back over into the corner. But they'll turn attention over to MJZ instead. This Sunray is actually doing so much damage. There's the BKB coming out from MNZ. He's looking for a Sunder target. Sammy Boy, though, just running away as they kite him left and right. Sunder's off with one of the illusions, but they'll jump right back in again. And they get the life drain off over on MNZ. He's already used the Sunder. He's not looking like he's going to survive this, but no, he's still alive. Egg is thrown out over onto the back lines. There's Monkey Forever fighting here with Leo Styles. He's trying to take down the egg. Does manage to to do it and the aegis does get popped buyback coming out now from the phoenix as they're just chasing down frank over here. and they're fighting in the nether toxin don't want to do that but they get a nice bash off and mnz over here they've got that snowball it'll be able to cancel out gunner as he's get channeled up but mnz he will fall gunner somehow still alive at the very last second thanks to that essence ring leo style he is taken down Oh my god, you know, just too far forward trying to get that Sunder off. And uh, Matthew, I feel like you could have played that one a little bit better. You could have uh, jumped behind the pug and popped that punch on him and got the snowball after, but allowing him to get that last decrepify out saved him. Now, MNZ, you're right, he's amazing, but some questionable decisions coming out from him in the start of that one. Moxie tried to tell me, she tried to tell you guys that uh, this is just what this guy does. You know, too far forward and without Metamorphosis, there's just no way he's able to take that fight. In fact, uh, he buys out there as well, so he's dead for another 50 seconds. There's two catapults coming alongside Spectre here, and you're not going to be able to hold this with just the Nature's Prophet and the Tusk. Oh, but Sammy boy, he shows mercy. He gets back. Catapults aren't going to end up reaching your Tier 3. We live to see another day. Coming over in this mid lane, though, so perhaps they'll go and they'll take the Tier 2. Terrorblade down for another 27 seconds. Lena down for 20 well, it looks like they're just going to let the creeps do their jobs, though, instead. Oh, actual push. I think that... I don't know. I feel like they could have put some pressure down. What do you think? Yeah, they could have done a little bit more than they did. You know, uh, the enemies, I don't think any of them had a buyback available there. Uh, no, but they, they don't know fact, that, I guess. Yeah, in fact, I think you could have taken a Tier 3, to be completely honest with you. The Fortify was on cooldown as well. So, uh, again, you're right. They don't know that, and if they commit too far forward, then they do just die. So, and they did buy back on the Phoenix too. They had their own buybacks. Playing mm -hmm. it safe on Zoomers, you know, you have to show respect to a team like Thunder Predator. Uh, you go too far forward against them, uh, they'll take everything. MNZ still a ways away from his Abyssal Blade. It's super important. This Pugna is able to get away with so much. Gunner has been playing absolutely insane this game in the team fights. 
Agreed. Alright, but we do have the tier uh, 4 items dropping right now. We got a Magic Lamp, Minotaur, Hone, Flicker, and the Timeless Relic is always just such a good item to pick up. Yep. Uh, Minotaur, oh, they Horn. have an Illusionist Cape? Oh my god. Sammy's very happy right now. Oh yeah. Uh, this is my number one, the number one thing I love about Illusionist Cape is you know, the fact the Illusions are so tanky and they do 50% damage. You can always shove lanes with this super safely. Uh, the uptime, of course, is as much as the cooldown as well, so that feels super nice. And, you know, the bonus 10% uh, damage, the bonus uh, stats uh, are both super good. But you win tons of games off the back of just being able to keep lanes shoved in safely with Illusionist Cape. It's going to feel very useful against Nature's Prophet, especially. This is nice, too, for Monkeys. He's got the flicker on him, so that plus 40 speed is going to be very nice for Mars to set up. And, of course, you know, the fact that you've got the flicker, the active itself, is going to make his life a little bit easier. So, yeah, Gunner's holding on to the Timeless Relic. We've got the Illusionist Cape over here on the Spectre. Magic Lamp over on Earth Spirit. And uh, Clumsiness just too good. Husky's going to hold on to that. Double damage, though, over here on MNZ. Uh, nobody's holding the Spell Prism, the best tier 4 neutral item. Is that on Zoomers? Thunder Predator. Oh, okay. I was like, it's definitely, like, they should pick that up. Oh my god. Got yeah, the Prince's like... Knife on the Lena. Yeah, what the? What? There is, that is the best uh, tier 4 neutral item. The spell At the prism. very least, just give it to Nature's Prophet, I don't know. Yeah, he's holding an Aquila right now. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a dead Matthew over on the side. They get a nice pick off. That's so weird. I don't know why no one's holding it. Yeah, it is super weird. Did somebody? <laughs> it's not lost, right? They actually have it in their inventories. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I was wondering, you know, maybe they maybe they dropped it somewhere and they didn't pick it up. But MJZ might see it. Maybe he already does, and he's afraid to take it. You know, it's like your dad's alcohol. Doesn't want to. <laughs> it's the good stuff, you know. I just uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll see. He's about to head to the base. He'll probably check the shop and for neutrals in just a moment. You know, it does feel super weird not having anyone hold on to that. But you know, the faster ultimates, uh, faster glimmer capes, nature's call, etc. On him is going to be a lot more useful than the Aquila. As uh, nice as the aura is to have for your teammates in these team fights, I imagine. Being up behind M and Z, looks like they're thinking about trying to push out a little bit. They don't have their supports, Matthew teleporting all the way back to the base. MNJZ, of course, does have that global capability. 40 minutes are up, though. Runes are getting retrieved. And Roshan is up again. And this time with an Aghanim's Blessing. Uh, I think... God, who did you give this one to? Did you give it to Tusk? Oh, gosh. MJZ is just dead. Okay. He's playing very far forward right now, just uh, trying to make space for the enemies. He was just in the enemy jungle over here. Uh, you know, for some reason, teleported in and then immediately teleported out. The spirit just narrowly missing him as he got back out. But, you know, Pugna's... Uh, your deaths do matter at this point. There's a lot of gold going towards Pugna. 431. Man, there's going to be a fight breaking out any second here. They're really playing close, trying to get this kill onto the Spectre, but... It's going to be the Haunt coming in hot. Monkeys looking for this opening is going to join off into the back as they should be able to take Frank down. Sunray will burn him to a crisp. Sammy boy is unstoppable. And Ocean, though, a little bit too far forward. Laguna Blade actually gets eaten, though. So they could. Oh, the Scotty's doing a lot of work, though. The Decrepify comes out from the Pagna. Mm -hmm. Back off. They took down Frank and they lost Ocean for it, but. They also forced out that Metamorphosis over on MNZ. Still have quite the duration, though. I don't know if you can go in on this. They still are holding on to Arena. They've got Egg. Sammy just kind of dancing around over here in the river. Saying hi. MNZ walks directly into the pit. Feels like he should not be able to do that. Casual Spectral Jagger. LSA coming out here. They don't have the Viper. They're going to try to drain off over here on MNZ. And they do a lot here. Not quite enough damage, though, to take him down just yet. Matthew, being that sacrificial lamb, takes too much damage. He will fall. So now they don't have the tusk. 
And they're running in. They're looking for more. We'll connect over onto MJZ. They throw out the stone over here onto the Lina as well. But the center comes up with a follow-up here. Monkey's Forever has that BKB. And the life drain comes out. MJZ next to fall. MNZ forced to run away as Sammy Boy chases after him. He doesn't have the Abyssal Blade still available. More buybacks coming out, though. So they want to try to fight this. Sammy Boy getting hit up with the Walrus Punch. They've got the Lotus on him as well. So over onto the side. Monkey's forced to run away. Looking for this opportunity to get another spear off. Laguna Blade comes out a second time here. But they're just too tanky. They're not able to take down the Spectre just yet. MJZ being held in place with that Clumsy Net is going to fall thanks to Life Drain. And now Frank. Oh, this is not looking good for Frank here. He gets bashed right back up on in again. And with that, I think they're going to go for the Roche. Yeah, there's not a whole lot they can do to prevent this either. You know, even if you were to teleport right to the tower, I think they take it so fast right now with all these heroes. They can look, uh, you know, in, in these team fights, it's just impossible for anyone to get away from Spectre once she's on top of it. You're just nonstop attacking. You know, uh, we we talked about this earlier on. Uh, the fact that she has the Scotty is 50% slow against range here. So Viper, he's barely moving once you're on top of him. Uh, Nature's Prophet, Lena, Terrorblade as well. You know, the fact that you didn't have Metamorphosis and made that fight even harder. Feels like four Zoomers keep uh, baiting that one out and you're forced to get back. MNZ might have missed his timing. And, you know, he's frustrated he can't get his hands on anyone. He's now going for the Nullifier. Um, and, and even then, you know, I'm not sure that's going to be enough. You're going to be able to grab one target maybe in these team fights uh, if you get the Nullifier. Pugna, it's barely going to even work on, you know? Uh, I feel like... He's just too fast. He's always going to be on the other side of the fight before you get on him. It's pretty difficult. And I will say, Gunner has played this so well. Oh, I like this. I actually really like this. Sammy Boy picks up the Agnum's. Uh, he's got the Agnum's Blessing now. So they can take any pick off that they want. And that's really scary for Leo Style. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I interested. I'm not convinced, you know. I see the Earth Spirit. I'm a huge fan of that hero. I think if you put it on him, you can like kick the uh, the Terror Blade out of a team fight after he metamorphs and then just win. But you know, I think I, think you, I don't think it's a bad choice though either. Yeah, I think part of it is that you just love your your Earth Spirit. But we have seen some really sick Earth Spirit plays where they've won victories off of the fact that they're able to get those kicks off. Mm -hmm. Take that last shrine before uh, they proceed into the enemy base, just so they aren't able to sneak in and come from behind them. Their backs are against the wall here for sure. I'm not sure what they're going to be able to do. You know, you're just going to be able to jump onto this Lena right away at the start of the fight. She's saving for buyback gold right now, but as I was talking about, this Hurricane Pike isn't doing a whole lot for her. You know, Leostar was doing so well early on, but they just lost that momentum. And it's really coming back to bite them in the butt. Now, Terrorblade is all alone here. I don't think they'll be able... Oh, if they... Oh, they see him. They throw out the Spectral Dagger. Shadow Step, maybe? No, that's pretty He's far forward there. Going. It's a little too far forward, I think. Right. Like, they're going to play this a little bit more carefully. You also have Gunner on the other side. And, you know, he is the uh, the beating heart of four Zoomers team fights. You know, without him, uh, people are going to get blown up by this Terrorblade. Busy doing a little cliff jungling, but they get the jump on Leo style. And he does have buyback, though, so. Not the end of the world here, but definitely doesn't feel good. Oh, they found the Terror Blade here, but Ocean. All right, there it is. There's the haunt going forward. They jump forward immediately over onto Frank. They're just going to keep popping back and forth here. Ocean forced to run away. BKB gets popped here from MNZ. And Sammy Boy just going to continuously get healed up here by Husky. They'll try to go for the stun, but Sammy just walk away. And these Terrorblade illusions are just cutting through this Phoenix. But he's not going to have meta soon. And they can just repeat this if they like. All they have to do is wait a, a couple of seconds. And, you know, uh, if they try to go forward onto you, you can turn around, you can punish. You still have Phoenix Egg available. You're doing tons of work with the Decrepify still. I, without the Metamorphosis, I think it just becomes over at that point. BKB is also going to be on uh, cooldown a little bit. Actually, you'll have it back by the time Metamorphosis is over. I retract my statement. Okay. Gunner, 
Gunner, he's got travels too, so he's just shoving out top. Oh, uh, sure there it is. Him. There's the uh, the Spectre Ags coming in hot. Bless those boots of travel. M and Z, he's almost dead. Nobody gets the Sunder up at the last second of coming out here from Monkeys. Egg's going to go off, though, on the backside. They went and they've just decrepified him. This is not looking good for this terrible He jumps forward, but there it is. There's the Laguna Blade. M and Z somehow still alive. Ooh. He turns back around and gets the Sunder up yet again. And now Sammy Boy trying to fight through here. Ocean already dead. Sammy chasing him down. He's just thinking, I can't do this. It's too hard. He backs off. Matthew Balls. I'll try to get the drain off over here on Frank. Oh my god, M and Z though, pushing those buttons so well. They have a blink dagger though over here on Monkeys. He blinks forward. He wants Frank. He's gonna be able to pin him over here onto the wall. They look like they want to go in there, but Sammy jumping right back in again. They'll find the kill. MJZ now forced to run away. Sammy just chasing him down. The glimmer cape not gonna do anything when you've got that sunray on you, but he goes for the thunder play. He's being a bro as he runs right back into the base. They spear him back. It's still going to be a death, but MNZ finds the kill on Monkeys Forever as the rest of the side of four Zoomers, they just went maybe a little bit too far here. So looks like they're going to be allowed to walk away. They still had a tier two up. What the what? <laughs> That's probably one of the only reasons why they get to leave the base. You know, the tier two still had full HP there. Or basically, you know, just lost 20 health. Uh, at the start of that fight, there was actually such a sick play there. Uh, they had the four staff to push him forward on the Terror Blade. Uh, that gave him enough distance to get him even further with the Abyssal Blade. Oh! Sammy, oh, Sammy, he wants Frank, and boy. Man, MNZ is now becoming a support hero as he tries to keep his teammates alive. Sammy's taking a lot of damage, though, but they have that long range life drain coming in hot, plus the sun, right? Aegis does get reclaimed, though, so Sammy has to be very, very careful. He thinks about going back in again. He gets hexed up thanks to that Prince's Knife, but. With that Aegis gone, they'll behave. They'll back off. Yeah. Looking to grab that kill. This guy is using Shadow Step very well here. Oh, you love to see it. He haunted as well there, unfortunately. So that's going to be on cooldown for a while. And they do have Metamorphosis. But uh, I feel like if you leave the base, you just get punished so hard so quickly. Uh, the moment you leave your base right now, you know, Sammy Boy, he's just breathing down your neck. You separate someone to go back and defend, he's going to Shadow Step on top of you. He's going for the MKB now, and that's uh, I feel like that's going to be the nail in the coffin, you know? After you grab that, you don't have the evasion anymore on the Terra Blade, you're finally going to be able to bring him down. Playing so tightly here, they want the kill on Sammy Ocean, though, walks right past Leo Style. They'll turn their attention, though, over to the Phoenix instead. They'll follow up with the LSA, and it's just so much damage here. Husky, though, still alive as they're going to be going in. Sammy Boy, he's taking a lot of damage. Husky's going to be able to go use the Icarus Dive, and he's going to try to get this egg off. They have the BKB, so they will be able to take down the Phoenix. But now over on the back lines, it looks like Ocean also to fall. BKBs have already been used, and now Sammy Boy considers going right back in again. They managed to go, they get MNZ. Can they finish him off before he gets the Sunder off? Yes, they'll be able to take down the Terra Blade. And now Frank trying to climb his way out. MJZ will fall. Do they have anything to cancel out this TP? It doesn't matter. They've got enough damage. They turn it right back around again. Leo style forced to teleport away. They do have buyback now on the Terra Blade. No buyback on MJZ on the Nature's Prophet. No buyback on this Viper. They will be able to buy back the Nature's Prophet in another 20 seconds here. So he's not going to be down for the full duration if he doesn't need to be. But I'm... I, I I think uh, he's going to be fine. You know, you're not able to shove th all the way down through this tower and through the fortify before the Nature's Prophet gets back up. I imagine he saves that buyback for the next team fight. Fortify will probably defend them from this massive creep wave, and Lena will spam it out. You do have to be careful, though. Oh, well, Sammy, he saw that he wants to punish them for trying to go for that. Water. Monkeys forever, though, going right back, and they have the BKBs, though, so it's not going to be able to go and hold them into place. But the aggression was real there as they'll turn back around they'll heal everybody up and they'll pay attention to the buildings sammy boy he's hungry he turns his attentions over to the bottom while his teammates are taking the mid still no terror blade for another 29 seconds no viper for another 40 so the damage is real right now on these buildings because mm -hmm. of opting not to buy back on the terror blade is uh what's going to cost you two sets of racks they're not able to grab the top one because you still have that tier two up and like we talked about earlier jay has got to be careful here so they drop a sentry sammy just continues to go and hit forward the spear back coming out for monkeys they'll step forward and they get the kill on matthew mnz he actually bought out got that nullifier he swapped his inventory instead of boots so he's going to be extremely slow 
Especially underneath that spectral dagger, 283 movement speed, trying to walk around. He might need his boots after all, but it feels so frustrating for him. He has all these items. He has Scotty, Abyssal Blade, and Nullifier, but even then, it feels like he can't get on top of heroes and blow them up. Gunner is doing so much work this game on the Pugna. And, uh, Looking very good here. I think this all comes down to the lack of lockdown we talked about at the start of the game. If you can't stun out Pugna, uh, Gunner here on the back line, you know, he gets to do whatever he wants with his decrepifies. Just not enough lockdown, like you said. No, four step forward over here as they jump over onto Gunner with that nullifier, but you get a whole other thing going on over on the base. Gunner does go down during all of this, but now Sammy Boy just chonking away over here on Frank. There's going to be the pushback. Buyback comes out now from Gunner. Does have the boots to travel. The Sunray is doing so much damage and keeping them alive. MNZ, he manages to go get the Sunder up. The egg pops out. They go right back in over to MNZ and they go and they take him down. There's no Terror Blade now for 90 something seconds. MJZ will fall. This might be game. There's nothing that they're able to do right now. Do you think and it's called? That's it. You know, with Thunder Predator, they played uh, an amazing game of Dota, but at the end, you know, they weren't able to do anything oh, to stop them from blowing up uh, Leo style in these fights. And as the game went on, your Tear Blade was like the only factor really doing damage, and he couldn't do anything up against the Pugna. They played an amazing Pugna on Gunner that game. That was an amazing draft by four Zoomers. So well played by him. Always decrepifying the target that the TV is trying to go on. You know, it. we kind of groaned a little bit when we saw that they, um, maybe not groaned, that's not the right word, but we saw, you know, this was such a free spirits game, right? When we mm -hmm. saw the fact that they still had, you know, the Ember Spirit, that's what Gunner's known for playing, even the Void. But like you said, the Pugna just did so much work. It put so much pressure down on the towers. Uh, his positioning was great. His itemization was very, very good too. And it just paid off immensely very nice play coming out of here from four zoomers and uh m and z you know he he got farmed up he got all the items but just a couple of these bad positions really kind of started to to cost them here if you look at some of these graphs like there's a huge swing going on between these two teams and, it really uh, is. It and... wasn't. It wasn't all MNZ. Obviously, you know they they started taking some really good smoke plays. They started getting the jump over onto Leo style, but uh, you know there's only so much that Matthew can do to save you at the end of the day, right? Exactly. <laughs> and uh, you know you had some nice uh, roach sneaks and whatnot, but Matthew, uh, he can't carry the game on his back from the position four. He tried. God knows he tried, but. Uh... This is a best of two series, guys, so we are going to go to a quick break. But when we come back, we'll have game number two of Four Zoomers versus Thunder Predator.